This is an Otis elevator button, and it was sent in by a chap called Michael, who also sent in uh, some Dutch uh, stroopwafel, I think it's pronounced, and could could be wrong, but it's the caramel waffle type stuff. And he also sent me some uh, drop, which is a, a popular Dutch licorice, quite often salty. This is quite nice, this stuff. It's more sweet than salty, that version. And he was uh, in a building where the elevator engineers were stripping out an old elevator. He asked if he could have some of the buttons and they gave him some. So this is a red illuminated button. It's currently running on 24 volts to actually power the LEDs in it. You have two connections right up close to the LED circuit board itself, which are quite deep. You have to get a small screwdriver. You said looking for a small screwdriver. And it goes right up to the end there. It goes right in. It makes it quite difficult to actually connect. The other connections it's got are, and it's quite nice they're marked. For the start, the LEDs are marked 1, positive, 2, negative. And it has obviously got two switches, and it's marked 1, common, 1, normally closed, 1, normally open, and 2, common, 2, normally closed, and 2, normally open. So I was thinking it'd be quite interesting taking this to bits. The LEDs do light at 24 volts. They run at approximately 15 milliamps, and the illumination is quite nice. It's just a gentle illumination. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit because otherwise you're not going to see an awful lot because it's going to be a bit far away. So let's uh, de-energize this circuit board and strip the button to bits. Now it's interesting to note that uh, elevators tend to use CAN bus networks these days. They often have a CAN bus network going down to the car and it deals with not just the buttons from the car but um, it will deal with various other inputs and control signals. I'm not sure if it controls the doors or not. Uh, there will be some fixed wiring for safety. Ooh, it's got two spacers here. There's the LED circuit board. There's a spring-loaded plunger. Does that come to bits any further? Is this going to unscrew? Let's uh, see if we can take the whole thing to bits. Oh, I'm not so sure this is. I think it's actually trapped in by a little latching mechanism. Yeah, I think it is. I think I might break that if I tried taking that out. He said, trying anyway. No, that's a guide to stop it rotating. Okay. So the power going down to the doors, should I say down all the, the to all the call buttons, uh, it's basically... Uh, the canvas network, it's 24 volts, 0 volts, and probably a data pair. So it might just be four cables, and it could be a data cable that's going down there. Standard Cat 5, not sure what they use. The circuit board, this started conducting at about 15 volts. And uh, it continued conducting increasing current up to 24 volts. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 LEDs. I get the feeling that those LEDs may all be in series. I think they will all be in series. And there are one, two, three resistors spread along the circuit. And the value of the resistors... 82 ohms. 8 to 0. 82 ohms. Just three resistors, I'm guessing. Again, the resistors are all in series, just breaking the circuit. Yeah, it's a double-sided board, and it's got a track coming from the positive and negative, going through two plated through holes here, and then just looping around all the LEDs, just cutting through the resistors in the process. They are all in series. That's quite neat. Uh, shall we try it out while it's out the thing? Although, really, a circle of LEDs isn't going to be that exciting, but let's give it a go anyway. It's not super bright. It's very deep red. It's a, a 600. You're, you're just seeing an orangey yellow uh, in the camera, but I'm seeing a fairly deep sort of somewhere about the 650 nanometer, I'd say, red. OK. What about the switch? The switch is another circuit board. Oop, with a little spacer there. Uh, another little circuit board, and it's just got a standard micro switch on it. That's simple enough. And these terminals, instead of using a, this sort of printed circuit board, board mount terminal block, it is just using uh, individual terminals that you'd find inside them. 
And it's perhaps notable that they've got huge anti-tracking slots between them and uh, they fit with the fins in here. So maybe that's to allow the buttons use on higher voltages, but I would expect it with a 24 volt LED circuit, it would just be 24 volts. But then again, you, could, you just never know what you're going to get. I've been literally stung that way before. So yeah, it's very modular. Um, that's about all there is to say about it. It's uh, Servicing wise, theoretically, you could change that uh, switch out if you wanted, if, if you were not being able to find. The thing about the elevator industry is they rely on components going obsolete very quickly. And, you know, you might have an elevator um, in your building that the button, you know, a button fails. And then you go to find, you contact Otis and say, could we have a replacement? And the only thing that's going to fit in that hole that, for the button is... Uh, this specific switch. I don't know if it's a standard switch or not. And if it's obsolete, the cost can be quite astronomical. So if you were uh, in that situation, I suppose you could service it to a degree. But yeah, that's quite neat. It's quite a smart little switch.